Yes, I'm Luxilio clan and my that name is Owen Clutch. My grandmother is Marie Thomas and Seymour Thomas. My dad is Andrew Thomas and Sophie Thomas. She's from the south, from the south side. My parents passed away when I was really young. Because I don't remember my mother. I don't even know what she looked like until I came across a picture. My daughter, I don't know where she got it from. But it was nice to see my mother for the first time after, what, 70 plus years, not knowing what she looked like. I always wondered what the what kind of person she was, you know. Is she quiet? Was she loud? Things like that. Them youngsters these days, they're sure blessed to have their parents. No good to grow out without a parent, both parents. My grandparents, Marie and Seymour, Thomas, they raised us, me and my sister. I don't really remember about the harvesting animals at the fishing because the grandfather was uh, into farming. He caught a whole bunch of farm animals and stuff like that. And, uh, grandmother done all the fishing. My sister was the one that's always hanging around with my grandma, but I helped out, you know, setting net, taking out fish, cutting it, making dry salmon. A couple of times I helped her take out a whole bun, real big, huge sturgeon. She told us, she told us, she always said, don't be scared of these things. They're <clears throat> my tip our boat, but it's if you know how to handle them and put them in the boat, there you can. It's really easy. Sometimes you can watch her there. She bring that uh, sturgeon up, not too far from the boat, and then uh, she let it go, bring it back down, and then she'd slowly bring it back up again, and then let go a little bit and then bring it back up again. When she got it close to the boat there, she grabbed that around underneath. She flipped it upside down. Said, you flip it and then it wouldn't go. And I helped her, she drag it in the boat there upside down. Said, you don't, don't be scared there. Said, as long as it's upside down, you've got nothing to be scared of. Have you ever seen a fish swimming upside down? Only when it's dead. <laughs> yeah, my grandfather is the one I hung around with, doing farm animals, horseshoeing, fixing harnesses, stuff like that, watching cattle, chicken. Harvesting hay, everything. Grandfather and grandmother, whenever they won batlats or somebody invited them, they always took us along because, uh, you know, back then they didn't believe in babysitting, babysitters. That's where we learned that you be real nice and quiet when you're in the Batlats Hall, because that's a sacred place. No children were allowed to run around. They were always, all the children were always kept outside and told that, that they can't make noise. And when you go into the Batlats, you don't sit there and uh, do th other things. You sit there, you're invited to witness what's going on. The respect you give back to them is to listen what's going on, what they're talking about on 
in the middle table. Nowadays, you see them youngsters, they all got cell phones. Their thumbs going. <laughs> How are you going to listen? What's going on if you're busy looking at something else? That's disrespecting. That's what the elders used to say, that don't, you don't respect your culture and what you're being taught. You listen and you respect and you give and help out whenever you can. Because a long time ago, they used to help one another all the time, you know. They didn't ask for money. They didn't ask, uh, expect to get paid. This is out of your heart. You help somebody. Nowadays, you go someplace, you go visit, you walk into somebody's place, what do you want? <laughs> Thinking that you're there to borrow something or whatever. They never used to lock their doors way back then. Doors were open. There's always a bannock on the table. Tea was warm on the stove. If you come to visit, they're just like grandparents. If they went to visit somebody, they always had something with them, like dry moose meat or fish or whatever, canned can berries or whatever she had. She used to pug it, pug it, shit. There's nobody home there. They just had to sit there and have tea, and then they should leave the pug it on the, their table. They didn't worry about people stealing from them or anything. For you respect the person's place that you go to. That's what they'd done. Um, what kind of things does it, like when they choose a person to be a Zatne, what, or the name, what kind of things do the, like, they look for in that type of person? I guess they have to be uh, humble, not loud, you know. You, if somebody says something you do that you don't like, that offends you, you don't turn around and start yet. Uh, yelling at them or whatever. Just uh, stand back, just like they used to say. Just give it to the Lord and pray for them. What they say and the bad things they say and do to you, it's just like nowadays the way they say karma will get them back. Yeah, you have to respect. <coughs> so like with a Zatne, what are the core values, like the protocols you have to be in order to become a Zatne? The way I was taught, Grandma taught us, you have to respect. You sit there, learn, you listen. She didn't like us asking her questions, you know, about how do you do this or what. And said, that's what you sit there for, you learn and you listen and, you know, everybody's talking, what they do, what they say. You sit there and listen to them, that's how you learn. So you, you learn by, by participating and yeah. helping and, and being quiet. And yeah, if you be quiet, you're there, you do what you're supposed to do. You know, just like when they're having battles, whatever there's going on, you jump in there and you help. Mm, okay. Um, when when you get like you have a name, a, a Zatni name, what does that mean to you? It means respect. All the Zatni, the older elders, grandmother went to all the. Uh, Bear clan, uh, frog clan, and beaver, all that. She talked to them and she 
told them about what her, what was she was doing. She was going to take me and my sister and put August across. And she'd done that, and they were all in favor of whatever she wanted to do. But years later, when we got older, again she went to all the other clan is that name members and she told them that she was gonna give Alice and my myself a name. So she was getting ready. So about a year after that she had the potlatch and then we all both got names. We taught just like I said there you always sit there and listen to what uh, going on, what they're telling you. You listen to your elders because they know what uh, the protocols and stuff like that, uh, potlatch. And you learn that way. It really didn't change my life because uh, I, was, I wasn't that uh, old. I was probably about 15, 14, 15 years old. Didn't change my life much. But they still had to respect, you know, if you went in some elder's place, you have to respect us. You respect surroundings of everywhere you go. A place that's not your own. You know, just like grandmother used to do there, was, she always said, if you go visit somebody, even your brother, or your sister, or your mom, or whoever, you always bring something for yourself to eat and you share. Bring a little gift of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Nowadays they don't do that anymore. They just walk into your place and flock down there and start on in the place. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, food was a, a, shy, a show of respect and humility? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like, how important was food in, like, growing up in that way and whatnot when you were young? Nadley, I don't remember, remember much about growing up in Nadley. I remember, uh, the only thing I remember is, uh, Grandparents, they used to have a house, you know, where Serena lives, Serena, there. and then right next door there, the grandfather had a big hall, a dance hall, and where they used to have all the dances and social gatherings and stuff. And, and I don't know what happened. We moved out of uh, Notley, and my dad, Clear cut that the jack where we they, they built the house. That's where we live. Uh, it was about what eight, seven, eight years old when when they moved on. Nineteen. Oh, I forgot what year that was. Could you get that door? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's somebody okay. that. Or somebody's at the door. I didn't tell anybody it's going to be interviewed. Hello. No, that's my next Hello. door neighbor. <laughs> It'll be about 10 minutes. Yep. Oh, he's just returning that SOS I loaned him. <laughs> oh, the sink, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Good man. Good man. <laughs> <laughs> he's sure helpful. He brings me stuff. He cooks, he cooks whatever left over, he, he can't finish, he brings it over. He looks after me, a good that young boy. Good. That's what they should do, they're young kids. Go chug on the elders, you know. Do you need anything? He always throws my garbage away for me too. They're real helpful young man. That's the kind, that's the way they should do it, and, you know. Go check on the elders, talk to them, quiz them while they're still alive. Yeah, it's good to tape record them, 
Too bad nobody tape recorded uh, Bernie McQuarrie. She is one big, one big library. She is so funny too. She is real comical. I sure miss her that at that gathering. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I had a book, and it, the book went missing. Oh, jeez. I go to the I was like, where's the book? It was gone. Oh, no. All these stories about little people, Sasquatch, everything. Yeah. Everything. That's what I mean there. They, they, that's what they should get uh, stories from Emma Baker and tape record it and write it down and stuff. The legend. Yes. That's, uh, that's legends. I'll be doing that with this. Yes. So um, in closing, is there anything else you'd like to mention? Like any uh, pause? Like what, what? What is it you would like to see for our people in the future? To get back to, you know, well, it's not going to happen there, and you know, just like the old ways, kids nowadays they think this is twenty first century. <coughs> And it's good to have, you know, that old system like the potlatch and stuff there where you respect, respect surroundings, respect elders, people around you. Give and help and don't, don't expect anything, any pay in return, just like all people used to have. You don't expect anything. You get paid for everything. You just do it out of your heart. If you teach, you want to teach. Kids, they'd learn from this. My future generation down the line there, my grandchildren and my descendants, they'll probably be listening to this after I'm gone. That's good to have something like that to teach your younger generation about what the old days was like. If you could speak to, <laughs> imagine you had a great, 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 great grandchild and a hundred years in the future, what would you say to them? What my grandparents taught me, I try to teach them. You know, you can do things uh, the 21st century way or whatever, but uh, try to incorporate the old ways what the old beliefs, you know, our clan system and stuff like that, the Baslat system, where the respect and everything come from. No drugs, no alcohol. This is the way we were taught. You are taught, don't talk back to your elders when somebody tells you something, the elders talking to you. You don't turn around and try out talk them, that's no good. You don't uh, walk behind an elder real fast. If you're going to walk behind an elder, you, you come in front of them and say, I'm going to walk behind you. Because that uh, all people believe that if you walk behind them, you walk with their spirit, you walk away with it. That's when they get sick and stuff like that. That's what our beliefs were. But nowadays, there are kids running around, you know, when you're gathering, kids running around back and forth around elders, they don't care. But there too, you can't keep kids place one place. Their kids will be kids. But they got to be taught, though. You have to teach them respect and caring and giving. Don't expect anything in return. Just teach them. Hey, oh.